was given the opportunity to speak today, and as soon as I got off the phone with Lily, um, I think, believe God placed on my heart to speak about expectations. And you know, I was thinking about it, I was like, I think that's a good thing to speak on, because we have a week before youth camp, and it kind of gives us time, gives you guys time, me time, to kind of think about what do we want God to do for us this year at youth camp, you know? Youth camps can be either a time where we go, it's always a time where you go and you have a great time. I don't think I've been to a youth camp where I was like, well, this was whack. You always have a good time. But the other question is, are you being built spiritually at a youth camp? Because you're guaranteed to have a good time with your buddies, your friends there. But are you going to be growing in Christ while you're, while you're there? And, you know, today I want to kind of lead us into a thought or lead us in discussion just to dwell upon the thought. What are we expecting God to do for us at this youth camp, you know, God is a good God. He wants to do good for his people, for his children, you know, the, those that love him. He loves to do good for them. You know, there's like, we serve God, we do things for him, but there's not much we can do for God because we're, we're people. He's God. He's all powerful. And before we get into expectations, um, as I was preparing, um, it's the way I've been understanding things. God's been opening up to me expectations and what we expect from God is very closely related to things we ask God for and things we receive from God. So the way I like to think about it, or it makes most sense to me, you know, if you know you're not going to receive something, then you don't expect it. Think of when you have guests coming over, like especially when you were a little kid and you know your best friend was coming to your house. Like to me personally, I would like literally five, every five minutes I'd be running to the window to check if he's there like an hour prior. Because what if he came early? You know, that's what you're expecting. That's because I knew he was supposed to come, and I'm expecting him. But on a day when he wasn't coming, you know, I didn't, wasn't even thinking about him. So that's what I like to think of expectations. When we know we can receive something, and I'm putting this into context with youth camps and stuff, we know we can receive something from God, we're going to start expecting it once we know what God offers for us or what we can receive from him. And I would like to, before we actually get into the sermon, I'd like to ask you guys to stand and um, say a quick prayer real quick that God would speak to us, that we hear his word today. And if you guys want to hear something specific from God today, you know, ask him right now. You know, one of the first things about receiving is you have to ask. So in this quick prayer, say what you want to hear or what you want God to do today. And then hopefully we all hear a word from him tonight. Father God, Lord, we thank you that we're able to gather in this place today. Lord, that we all made it here safely, Lord. That it is your mercy, Lord. It is your love that we are gathered here tonight, Father God. You have called every single one of us, Lord. You love every single one of us, Father God, Lord. And I believe that you want to, Lord, you want to move in every single person's life, Father God. I believe you have much in store, Lord. I believe you have many blessings, Lord. Many good things that you want to pour out to your children, Father God, Lord. And we, we pray right now, Lord. Maybe, Lord, we don't even know what I ask. But, Lord, I pray that today your word be spoken, Father God. Not what I think, not what I want to say but lord what your holy spirit is speaking today lord we want to hear your heart father god we want to hear your will be spoken today lord we pray that we are able to receive lord and comprehend your word in the name of jesus christ amen all right thank you guys so as i mentioned already one of the first aspects of receiving something is asking and you know in the bible this is made very very clear in almost every situation where jesus um healed or where Jesus did something for someone, he was asked. People approached him, people came to him, people literally ran to Jesus from everywhere. And they would ask him to heal them, to cast out a demon, things like that. One of the first aspects of receiving anything is we need to ask. And it's important to understand that, yes, God knows our hearts. Like before we even ask, whatever is in our heart, God knows it. Like we may be saying one thing, like when you see people sometimes, pretty sure you guys have done it. I'm not going to lie, I know I have done it. When you don't really, like, you don't want to really see that person, and you're like, oh, hey, how you doing? You know, you put on this fake smile, and you're like, you know, doing this whole fake thing where you're so happy to see them, and on the inside, you really could care less. You know, God sees through that. He sees our heart. He knows everything we do. He knows everything we think. Nonetheless, he likes it when we ask him. He wants us to pretty much say what we want from him or put our heart's desires out to him. He wants us to ask him to speak to him about those things. And it's very similar to how our earthly fathers, you know, 
many times I know for myself, my dad would know what I want just because he sees like either I told him way back when or this or that, you know, but my dad still, if I wanted something from him, he wants me to come and say, dad, this, this, and this, you know, can you give me this? Can you help me with that? Can you do that? You know, it's not a guessing game where he's like, okay, you go, are you thinking this? Or are you thinking that? You know, you come and you say what you want. And this is very simple with little kids. Like, they're so awesome. They just come and they just <laughs> straight point blank. Like, hey, mom, can I have this? Hey, dad, can I have this? And the awesome thing is, like, <laughs> like, they'll believe their parents about anything. Like, you know, this little kid's like, you'll be odd. Like, I've had this where I'm arguing with a little kid. Like, no, you can't do that. No, you're not going to do that. And he's like, well, my dad said this, you know. And, like, it's just this trust and this faith that they have in the word of their father, you know, and it's very awesome. And I think, I think that's a good thing for us to kind of pay attention to and maybe pick up on. But to discuss um, the fact that Jesus wants to or God wants to, wants us to ask and wants to hear what our desires are, uh, what our desires are, I'd like to get you guys to open up to Ma- Mark. Mark chapter 10, um, verses 46 through 52. I think they'll have it on the screen. So, um, yeah, Mark chapter 10, starting at verse 46. um, I'm just going to read through so we get some context. Now, they came to Jericho as he went out of this, talking about Jesus, as he went out of Jericho with his disciples in a great multitude, blind uh, Bartimaeus and the son of Timaeus, sat by the road begging, and when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Then many warned him to be quiet, but he cried out all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. So Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. Then they called the blind man, saying to him, be of good cheer, rise, he is calling you. And throwing aside his garment, he rose and came to Jesus. So Jesus answered and said to him, what do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, Rabboni, that I may receive my sight. Then Jesus said to him, go your way, your faith has made you well. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus on the road. See, it's very interesting. Like I've said already, God knows us inside and out. Jesus knew this guy was blind. You know, it says that he stood up and came to Jesus. Whenever you guys have seen a blind person walk, you know, they're either with a stick or they're being led by someone. You know, a blind person doesn't, you can tell when it's a blind person walking. And Jesus saw that. Jesus also knows that this guy was blind. Nonetheless, Jesus asked, what do you want me to do for you? You know, this kind of gives us insight into the character of God. Where, yes, he knows us, but he wants to have that relationship. He wants to have that communication with us where we ask him and we are, we make our heart's desires known to him. And then continuing in other places, we flip a few chapters prior in Mark chapter 7. Uh, starting with verse 24, I'm not going to read, I'm just going to summarize. Uh, a woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit heard of, that Jesus was there. She came and fell at his feet. And then key verse, um, she kept asking him to cast the demon out of her daughter. Story goes on, Jesus does cast out the demon. A few verses down, a deaf and a mute man is brought to Jesus. And not the man, but the crowd that brought him are begging Jesus to heal him, to put his hand on him. Jesus does so and the guy was healed. Chapter 8, a blind man hears that Jesus is there, and he asks him to heal him, and Jesus does. We continue in chapter 9, a dad brings a boy, and here the dad, it's kind of like a sense of desperation already. He says, if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. You see, in these moments where Jesus does these miracles, where Jesus does these great works, they begin with a person asking. A person has a need. And he doesn't hide it or beat around the bush. You know, he, like this dad, I believe he wasn't, like, it was just such a sense of desperation. He's like, if you can help us with, and just help us. You know, it says later on that Jesus asked him, do you believe? And the dad just immediately says, he cried out and said with tears. You know, this dad, he's already so broken. So all he's asking is for some help. And you read a further down, Jesus healed, uh, Jesus cast out the demon out of his son. And if we flip to Matthew um, chapter 7, Luke uh, chapter 11, I'm going to read those, verses, uh, those passages of Scripture later, but in there it says, um, Jesus says, Ask, and it shall be given to you. And then later on, for those who ask will receive. 
you know, it may, it's very clear that if we want to receive something from God, if we're asking, if we want God to work in our life, number one thing we have to do is you have to start asking God to do so. Because when we start asking, that's when God starts working in our life. That's when he starts acting. And then, you know, so I'm bringing up this point that we need to be asking God about things, you know. And I was like, so what do we ask God about? I was looking over myself, you know. We mainly ask God for things in our prayers. You know, we like, God bless this food. God bless us here, bless us there, protect us there. You know, our prayers are very broad. There's a lot we ask about. But then when you get down to it, it's mostly us just asking God for stuff. You know, all of it's me, me, me. You know, we, it's very little praise. It's very little worship, exaltation in our prayers. It's like, hey, God, I need your help here. God, I need help here. God, I need help there. And God, do everything I ask you to do. <laughs> so, you know, I was thinking over things that I ask God through my life, um, things I have heard of others, people that they pray to God about. So one of the, to me, now I think of it as funny. One of the things I asked God when I was a kid, um, me and my brother Boris, we would, if the forecast said weather, oh, I mean, I said weather, if the forecast said rain for tomorrow, guys, I'm being serious, the night before, we would be praying for sun. Because, you know, we had like this important thing called football coming up the next day where we had to go outside and play. And I was seriously prayed for, for sun, for good weather. And I think God was using moments like this to build our faith up because more, more times than not, there was no rain. It was sunny, and we're like, God's awesome. You know, and then, um, you know, going through college, uh, first few tests I took in college, like I did fine, but there was always that one or two questions where like, I just had a stupid mistake, just dumb mistake, and you got points docked. So then I was like, hey, I'm going to start praying so I don't make dumb mistakes on tests. I studied, I did my stuff, and then literally before an exam, I would put my head down and be like, God, help me not goof anything. Said it like that, it's been working. <laughs> then I've heard people pray, uh, people told me they pray for friends. You know, I've heard um, folks in our church have told me, that, you know, then they moved places, went somewhere. They couldn't make friends in the school, couldn't find, if they made friends, it was bad friends. You know, it's a, sim it's a very simple thing, like making friends, everyone does that. But some people, it was difficult, and they made a wise decision that, hey, I started praying that God would give me some good friends, and then couple weeks, a couple of days go by, God introduces new people into your life, you meet people, and I've heard those have been some very good friendships they had established. You know, we ask God for protection every time we go somewhere, or very often when we drive out, you know, we, hey, God, protect us here, protect us there, and if not all of us, many of us who drive can testify that, yes, God does protect in this situation, in that situation, it was God's hand that kept me alive, that kept me well. You know, um, when we go to work after college, things like that, a lot of us pray for a good job. We pray that we get a job that, you know, we can continue serving God. It doesn't consume all of our time, things like that. And we see God's blessing and that, you know, healing, we ask God to heal us, you know. Funny thing is, whenever, whenever, <laughs> Esther kind of mentioned it today, whenever we have like a cold or a flu, you know, Tylenol or like NyQuil is enough. And then as soon as it's like cancer or something, like, okay, now we need God. It's like, guys, God is powerful enough to heal you from cancer. He can heal you from a cold or a flu. And God does. Esther's testimony today that we heard. On Monday, they prayed. Tuesday, she was well, right? Praise God. See, it, we have many, many things we ask God about. Another one being forgiveness. In order to be forgiven, we need to ask. You know, God doesn't storm into anyone's life. We need to welcome him in and ask him to come and be our savior Another great thing that I don't think many people ask for, I hope many ask for this, is wisdom and knowledge. You now, if you need direction in your life, you need guidance in any decision, one of the first things you do is just pray for wisdom and knowledge. And in James 1.5, it literally says, if, anyone, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. It's simple as that. If you guys want to be smarter in your decisions. If you guys catch that, hey, I made a dumb choice here, I made a bad choice here. You know, don't beat yourself on it like, oh, I can't do this, I can't do that. You can do it, but with the power of God, with the hand of God, you can do all things. You know, so ask for that wisdom and God will give it to you. And, you know, all these things I mentioned, we also ask for God to lead us spiritually, you know, to build us up. 
I mentioned all these things. There's a lot of things we ask for, but as you guys know, we don't receive all things. You know, we might say God doesn't answer my prayers, but guys, no is also an answer. If you look at the story of David, um, David was king of Israel. He wanted to build a temple for God, and God said, no, David, you won't build it. That was it. That was an answer. David also, um, he, had a, he sinned in his life. As a result of that sin, he had a son uh, with another woman, and the son got sick. And David was begging and praying to God that the boy would be alive. And then God said no. That was God's decision. And, you know, we're not guaranteed everything we pray about. Like God, it's not like if we pray for something, God automatically gives it to us. But what I want to focus on today is certain things that we can pray about that pertain to our spiritual life, to our spiritual growth, which I believe God guarantees to us, which I believe God gives to us. And in order to kind of draw this stuff in or conclude it into one point, I want to start with a few um, passages and then narrow it down to, I think, one, th one thing that God puts a big emphasis on in given to his children. If you guys can, open up to Matthew chapter 7, um, verses 9 to 11. So I'll actually start out verse 7. Ask, and it will be given to you Seek and you will find, knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it will be opened. Or what man is there among you who, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? If he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? You know, so the first two verses, we've all heard it. You know, ask, you will receive, seek, you will find. But what I want to focus on with this passage is the last uh, verses 9, 10, and 11. You know, God gives us an analogy. We people with an evil nature aren't even corrupt enough to when a son asks a dad for bread to give him a rock. Or if he asks for fish to give him a serpent. You know, and if we with our corrupt and evil nature aren't bad enough to be doing that. Can you guys imagine God, who is holy, who is pure, who has no blemish in him? You know, and it says, if you, being evil, know how to give good gifts, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good, give good things to those who ask him? So from here, first thing I want to kind of put back in the mind of your head, good things, that's what God gives to those who ask him. We'll get into more in depth on what good things are, but just keep that in your mind for now. Flip into Luke chapter 11, verses 9 to 13. This is pretty much the same, same passage or same context going on. And Jesus says, So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you, seek, and you will find, knock, and it will be opened to you. Everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds. To him who knocks, it will be opened. If a son asks for bread from any father among you, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent instead of a fish? If he asks for an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If you then, being evil, know how to give good things to your good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? So we have the same, same context, same thing going on here. The only difference is instead of good things, Jesus says that the Father will give us the Holy Spirit. And so when I was preparing the sermon, I got a sense that those two things were related, good things and the Holy Spirit. And I wanna, one thing I want to point out is it's not talking about just the gift of speaking in tongues. It says the Holy Spirit. You know, the Holy Spirit has a lot more, does a lot more within us than just give us the gift of speaking in tongues. We'll get into that a little later, but now keep those two things in mind. God gives us good things, he gives his children good things, and he gives his children the Holy Spirit to those who ask him. We go to John, John chapter 16, verse 23. In here, just to give you some context, Jesus is talking about when he's going to leave this earth, he'll 
I believe he's, uh, it's about him sending us the Holy Spirit. He's going to leave, we'll be in sorrow, but then our sorrow, sorrow will be turned into joy. And in verse 23, he says, And in that day you will ask me nothing, but most assuredly I say to you, whatever you ask in the Father, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. So now it goes to from good things in the Holy Spirit, it says that whatever we ask the Father in Jesus' name, he will give us. You know, and I want to make it clear here that that doesn't mean if we just pray for anything, God give me this, this, this. We just name off our desires and say in the name of Jesus Christ after. It doesn't mean God gives it to us. That's not how it works to pray in the name of Jesus Christ. And I was thinking about this. I was praying about it. What does it mean to ask in the name of Jesus Christ? And what I believe is meant here is, let me try to draw it up this way. If I come to say there's a guy, Jason, or someone, and I come on the behalf of Daniel. And I say, Jason, I ask you in Daniel's name. So I'm, I'm coming to Jason asking for Daniel. So we're coming to God, and when we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, it's as if we're asking for Jesus. It's as if Jesus is asking. So the, what I think it means where it says, whenever you ask the Father in the name of Jesus Christ, he will give you. I think this pertains to this whatever doesn't include anything we want. It includes things that are aligned with the will of Jesus. It's things that Jesus wants for us. It's things that Jesus would be asking God to give us. It's those good things. It's that Holy Spirit that is mentioned in Matthew and Luke. I believe these things, they're all united in one aspect of, spirit, of like spiritual benefit to those who ask. And so, whatever you ask the Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, he will give you. So if we ask for things, for good things that are aligned with God's will, with the will of Jesus, we will receive them. And then John 15, the chapter prior, verse 7 says, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. And once again, we can take those words and just run with them. You know, you will ask what you desire. And just think, hey, God, I can ask this, 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 whatever I want, and you have to give it to me. No, there's a, there's a criteria here that says if you abide in me, meaning if you abide in Jesus, and Jesus' words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. No, if we're abiding in Jesus, we're walking with him. We're one and one with him. We're very close in our relationship. We abide in him. You know, we're connected to that vine, to our source of life. And so then our desires, things that, the desires of our heart are aligned with his desires. You know, you can't abide in Jesus and then go against Jesus. And so if we abide in him, once again, the things we will be asking for will be according to God's will. And from these four passages that I read, you know, one thing, what I believe God gives to all of his children and doesn't hold back on is he gives us good things that align with the will of God. He gives us good things, such as the Holy Spirit, that are also part of his will, what he wants for us, what he wants to pour out into our life. And you know, good things in the eyes of God, we might not necessarily see them as good things for us. Many things we ask for, we might think, oh yeah, I need it so bad, I need it desperately, God, you got to give it to me. In our eyes, that's a good thing, but if you're praying for something and, you know, it seems like there's no answer, think about it. Are you praying for something because you need it, or are you praying for something because God wants you to have it, because it's something that God wants to give to you? You know, if we flip to James chapter 4, verse 3. Verse 3 says, You ask and you do not receive, because you ask amiss, that you may spend it on your pleasures. See, I believe it makes it very clear. You know, if we're asking things from God just for our benefit, for our personal pleasures, pleasures I don't think... I think that's when we get to a point where we complain and say, God doesn't answer my prayers. But you know, before you make a request, before you make a demand to God, hey God, I need this, we got to understand the things that he gives 
to his children. You know, God is a good God. Something that may seem good to us may be detrimental to us. You know, if we think, let's just say money, for example. If someone is very hooked or connected to money and we ask for money, God knows that it will lead us away from him. You know, I'm not saying God's going to make you poor, but don't expect for God to just make you rich or something because you're asking for it and you think, oh yeah, oh, I'll serve in church, I'll glorify God with this money. You might, and God blesses a lot of people. There's a lot of rich folks who are Christian and they do great things throughout the world for his glory. But God sees the heart of those people. You know, and it's just not, not just related to money, anything we ask for. If it's going to lead us away from God, I personally believe that God will hold back from giving that to us. You know, we might think that, oh, God doesn't answer our prayers or God doesn't hear. But God, he just sees who we are better than we see ourselves. And so I encourage you guys to always think, you know, is this going to draw you closer to God? If you're praying about something very, very deeply or you're very committed to something, is it going to draw you closer to God or is it going to draw you away? And I want to focus... Uh, back on the passage from Luke, I really like how it says, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? You know, when I read that, to me, what just stood out is God pours out spiritual blessing to those who ask. You know, the work of the Holy Spirit, like I said, it's not just the gift of speaking in tongues. That's awesome, but the Holy Spirit does so much more. First off, by the Holy Spirit, you know, it says the Holy Spirit convicts the world of its sin. You know, by the Holy Spirit, we are convicted of our sin. By the Holy Spirit, we come to knowing God. We come to Christ. The Holy Spirit gives us life within our mortal bodies. You know, He witnesses within us that we are the children of God. I'm just naming things that Scripture says the Holy Spirit does here on this earth. He helps us in our weaknesses. He guides us into all truth. He works on us and He transforms us into the image of Christ. You know, when a person's character is being changed, is being developed, that's the work of the Holy Spirit. That's God's Spirit, little by little, taking out all the filth, all the trash within us, and filling it with the beauty and the goodness of God. And Jesus says that the Heavenly Father would give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him. And you know, when we look at, take away the word Holy Spirit and replace it with the work of the Holy Spirit, you know, it's very broad. There's so much things the Holy Spirit does, and everything He does is to build us up, build us up spiritually, and draw us nearer to God, to make us stronger Christians, to make us more rooted in Christ, to give us strength to walk in life. You know, when we go through tough times, He comforts us, He gives us wisdom, He instructs us, He leads us. So, what I believe God really wants to pour out into us as youth, into every individual who asks Him for things, who asks Him for something. I believe God loves it when we ask to be built up spiritually. And I believe God loves to pour out His Holy Spirit, loves to pour out His good things that build us up in spirit, that draw us nearer to Him. And I believe this is God. I don't believe I know that our spirit is God's main priority. You know, our flesh, we might want to have a lavish life. We might have to, uh, we might want to, you know, have it easy. But there's passages, there's places in the Bible where God says that he goes to the extent of tormenting someone's flesh in order to reach that person's spirit. You know, God is in, God's first priority is your spirit. Because his will is that every person be saved and every person come to know him. And so I believe his first priority in pouring out blessing and giving us in what God gives to his children is sp things that build, up us, build us up spiritually. And so as I was preparing the sermon, you know, what I came to, like you could say a conclusion or my understanding of this is it says God gives us good things, Holy Spirit being one of those good things. And so for good things, what I want to say is good things are things that build us up spiritually. They're not things that make it easy on us in life. They're not things that, you know, just make life a breeze and we have fun in it. They might be a good thing in the eyes of God. It might be something that we hate at first, and we only see its fruit 10 years down the road. We only see its blessings five years down the road. And that's because, once again, God's primary concern for us or about us 
is our spirit. It's our soul. That's why he sent his son. That's why Jesus came to this earth to save us, to die for us, to die for our souls. And therefore, if we're going to ask for anything that builds us up spiritually, if we're going to ask for God to strengthen us in our spirit, you know, if you're going through a tough time, if you're struggling with sin, and you're going to ask God to give you strength to overcome that sin, God's going to give that to you because that's going to draw you closer to God. That's a good thing that, the, that God gives to those who ask him. You know, if you notice that you need certain things, and I believe this probably applies to all people. You know, no one's character is perfect. You know, we're striving to be an image of Christ. If there's things within your heart, things within your mind that need purification, that need fixing, just ask God for it. And he's going to provide that to you. His Holy Spirit will do the work. You know, open the door up for God by asking him and then receive what God has to offer.